dude talking about film. Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of a dude talking about film. I'm a dude talking about film and I talk in regular language. Listen, today I'm going to do a review of two installments from the White Lotus franchise. First, I'm going to start with season one which aired in 2021, because I'm just going to cut to the chase. Spoilers all over the place. This was the far superior one. Now, this was a six-segment installment that already finished, uh, created by Mike White, and a very, very, I'll tell you right now, highly endorsed it, very, very good uh, piece of entertainment. Now, this starred uh, somebody I had not seen before, uh, Murray Bartlett, who won a... Uh, Emmy as the gay resort manager. Now, let me say, when I say gay over and over, I'm not gay bashing, yo. This was an important part of his character, okay? And I'm going to explain that as I talk about the characters and the plot of this great uh, entertainment piece put out by HBO Max. Also, this starred Connie Britton from Friday, uh, Friday Night Lights and um, Jennifer Coolidge, who also won a Emmy as a grieving rich chick. I'm just going to kind of be very um, casual with uh, facts, everybody, from this. Alexandra Daddario played a newlywed, uh, very good performance, and her husband was played by uh, Jake Lacey, who played Shane. They were on a honeymoon at this resort. That's what the whole flipping thing is about, yo. It's about these people coming together, all various types, very well-written relationships depicted in this. And uh, it was fantastic. Won 10 Emmy Awards. Now, the reason this works so much better than the season two, which is still going on. There's only been two episodes of season two. Right now, I'm talking about season one. Um, this worked because the resort, number one, had a challenge staff led by Murray Bartlett, again, as a gay resort manager. And he's struggling with an addiction. He's gotten off the uh, substances, but he's stressed out. And that's what makes this such a great piece of entertainment because we see him imploding. He has this issue with, uh, with Jake, who's this rich guy uh, um, that didn't get the suite that he wanted. And so this shows really well the, the specific characters and their individual plights, which come in conflict with each other. So basically, you've got this kind of through line throughout the whole season one piece where uh, the resort manager is at odds with uh, Shane, played again by Jake Lacey, because Jake Lacey's domineering. He's got his wife there. They're on their honeymoon. They don't, they don't know if they're really in love. She kind of wants out. She wants to discover herself because she's a journalist. And uh, there's just a lot of rich, rich things going on in this. Now, the relationship, as I mentioned, between Shane and Rachel is captivating because Shane is kind of struggling with his domineering personality. He has control issues. Rachel wants to become this journalist, and she's trying to find herself. And then she actually is going to leave him toward the end of the sixth episode, season one, White Lotus uh, piece. Um Meanwhile, again, Shane is at odds with uh, Murray Bartlett's character because Murray Bartlett's character starts to go down the path of, of drinking and taking ketamine and snorting ketamine, I should say, and, and having pills. Plus, he's hitting on some of the male attendants, and he's just kind of going out of control. And so they're at odds with each other. And then Molly Shannon makes an appearance as the doting rich mother of um, Jake Lacey's character, Shane. And this had really good writing. Another great relationship that was explored was between Steve Zahn and Connie Britton. Now, Connie Britton's a fantastic actress. Um, American Horror Story, uh, Friday Night Lights. She's kind of underplaying the character in here. Uh, in this piece, but I think that's because the way the character was written. She plays this strong female CEO of a big company, and the backstory is that Steve Zahn's character cheated on her. So another rich relationship depicted in this series where they just don't get along because you can tell he feels very threatened by her domineering uh, talents and qualities, 
And there's one really funny scene where Murray Bartlett's character is talking to Steve Zahn, <laughs> and he pretty much hits on him in very graphic language. It's really cool. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge, I've seen and you've seen her throughout the years, won an Emmy again for playing this uh, uh, rich gal, Tanya McCoy, who um, befriends this spa manager and wants to give her money uh, to kind of start her own business because when Jennifer Coolidge's character comes in, she's really screwed up. And then this uh, other character um, that, that plays the um, um, spa masseuse kind of helps her along and gives her some really uh, healing uh, therapy. And then um, Jennifer Coolidge's character, Tanya, kind of finds herself and then meets up with the guy and wants to give her money, but then decides this is a pattern she has. And it's just really, really well done. Again, Murray Bartlett's character kind of dominates this six-episode uh, first season of The White Lotus because he's so interesting. You know, he's he's really kind of anal about, no pun intended, about things. He's really, you know, kind of trying to walk the path of being clean and sober. But then the overwhelming pressure, the overwhelming stress just gets to him. And then at the end, he's going to get fired again. Spoiler alerts. Well, it's 2020, 2021, so, you know, 2021, you've probably already seen it. But if you haven't, you'll probably forget about these spoilers when you watch it. He's just really coming to grips with this stress that's being caused by his position. And then at the end, Shane comes in, and um, uh, Armand is his name, uh, Murray Bartlett's character is drunk and high, and he comes in and he graphic takes a dump <laughs> in um, in in Shane's suitcase and uh, pisses on it, and then they come into confrontation, and he accidentally uh, Shane kills uh, Armand with a knife because he thinks there's an intruder in there, and that's the way this ends. Overall, the show was great. Um, the characters are well defined. And the relationships are solid. Listen, at this level, at the, and by the way, Shane and Rachel um, uh, get back together. And Steve Zahn and, and his, uh, and Connie Britton, uh, they kind of get back together. And they have this son, who I didn't mention, who's sort of like kind of all screwed up. And then at the end, he decides to stay on the island in Hawaii and uh, pursue his, his passion, which is rowing with some natives and it, it all sounds, I know, kind of crazy, but it really was a great, great entertaining piece. And I think before I get to the worst one of the two, you're gonna love it. So the dude talking about film, I'm a dude talking about film, gives us a dude talking about film, gives us a 10 out of 10. There you go. It's well worth your watch, y'all. Now, very briefly, I started watching season two hoping to catch the mad magic. Now, this time, the resort, the White Lotus, is now set in Sicily, and the cast is different. You got Michael Imperioli, Imperioli from um, The Sopranos. You got F. Murray Abraham, who I looked is 83. Sorry about that. And he is the father of Michael Imperioli's character, who's a, who plays a Hollywood exec. Aubrey Plaza is in it, who I love. Uh, I don't watch a lot of her stuff, but I think she's extremely interesting and talented. Uh, her uh, husband in the piece is played by Will Sharp. Now, I'm just going to get to it. The characters are shallow, you all. I mean, at this level, look, the acting is impeccable. The acting is great, but they are limited by the writing. It's all about the story. It's all about the writing. There is no comparison with this, and I've only seen two episodes with this second installment of The White Lotus to the first season. There is no con comparison. The characters are shallow. They're under underdeveloped. The chemistry is non-existent between all the characters. When, when I look at Michael Imperioli, who's a great actor, and F. Murray Abraham, it's a disgrace the way F. Murray Abraham's part is written because he's just sort of a buffoon, and he is so talented, and his character is so one-dimensional and so shallow. They stick a bunch of characters in here that really, some are Italian actresses, it just sucks. It's really, really bad. I don't even, I'll probably watch it just because I want to see if it gets any better. I don't think it will. There, it, It's almost like the creator was originally going to start with just one season, and then HBO Max said, yo, 
you got to do another season because it's so popular. And it looks like they just rushed it. Anyways, the dude talking about film gives, so far in progress, the second season of The White Lotus A. Listen, yo, the dude doesn't know if it'll get better, but I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. There you go. I mean, look, if you want to watch it because you saw the first one, it's the only reason I watched the second one, immediately, immediately turned off. Immediately not a fan. All right, everybody, please subscribe if you like what you hear. Peace.